Good morning, New Beginnings family. My name is Leah Pauli. Come and let us worship our Lord together. Welcome New Beginnings friends and family. We're so excited that you are here with us, that you are joining us for this worship. We pray that this time is uh, a breath of fresh air as we take a moment, as we celebrate God's love and light in our own lives. Let us celebrate and worship our Lord. Come all who are hungry and thirsty, the Lord will provide for our needs. Come this day to the table of the Lord. Here we find welcome and sustenance. Come to this time of gathering and praise. Lord, we come with open hearts and spirits to receive your gracious gift of love. Amen.
Saving God, we come to you this day from times that are hectic. We are pulled in many directions. Open our hearts to receive you. Deliver us from the temptation to just give up and flounder in the rough waters of life. Reach out to us with your strength and power and bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us take a moment to still our hearts, to prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing. Let us lift these prayers to our Lord. God, we come before you today celebrating those in our life who have gone before us, who have shown us your love. Lord, we know your love because we have seen it, we have experienced it. And Lord, there are those in our lives who have influenced us, who we have seen lead the way. Lord, help us to love as they have loved others. Help us to love as we have been loved. Lord, even beyond that, help us to love as you love. Lord, you have called each and every one of us to something. Lord, we are inspired in this moment as we focus on you, as we focus on those who have loved us, Lord. Lord, help us to be agents of change, to be your people of love. Lord, we also lift up those among us who are sick, those who are struggling, Lord. There are so many who are dealing with COVID, who are losing loved ones, who are dealing with cancer, Lord, who have lost someone that they love, who are grieving, who are going through changes, as our world tries to deal with this pandemic still. Lord, be with us in this moment. Help us for just a moment experience your love once again. Lord, open our hearts and our minds so that we can feel you. Lord, when we experience your love, we are changed. Lord, inspire us. Help us receive your love so that we can inspire others, so that we can go out. Understand that this life is not about us, Lord, but what we share with others, how we care for others. And Lord, let us be a light to this world. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Judges 4, 
verses 1 through 15. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Horsheth Hagoim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for twenty years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh, and Naphtali, and told him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take possession, take a position at Mount Tabor. Bring ten thousand from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kadesh. Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you, nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and ten thousand warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went with him. Now Heber the Kenite had separated from other Kenites, that is, the descendants of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, and had encamped far away as Elan Bezaananim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera had was told that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the troops who were with him from Harshith Hagoim to the Wadi Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day on which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before you. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 warriors following him. And the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and all his army into panic before Barak. Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot. Set apart for you, Lord. 
Today we're talking about Deborah from the Bible, from Judges 4. And Deborah is one of my favorite heroes in all of the Bible. We've been talking in this sermon series, we've started just last week, talking about all of these people in the Bible who inspire us, whether they are old or young, whether they are a male or female, whatever their situation is, and we're going to go through all sorts of people and in wildly different situations. Talking about what does it mean to follow God? What, is it, what does it look like to be a follower of God? And how does that impact the people around them? And Deborah's a great example of this, about how her impact, how her uh, connection with God, the ways that she is in sync with what God is calling her to do, influences all of Israel, all of the people of Israel. So in Judges 4, Deborah is a prophetess. She's judging all of Israel, and she used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. Now judgment may seem harsh in this advice or uh, to follow her is another way of doing this. She led them. And in this story, she sent and summoned Barak. And he's the, the commander, the leader, the one who is going to help the Israelites be free of those who are oppressing them. And she calls him up and she tells him that he needs to go to Mount Tabor and bringing 10,000 troops and saying that we will win if you can do this, if you can go to this place. And this commander of the army, Barak, says to Deborah, I will not go unless you go with us, unless you go with me. 
This is an amazing thing happening here. Barak is the commander and he's looking at this woman, this wonderful, powerful woman, and says, you need to lead us. And she says, surely I will, and tells him that when she does, she will get the credit too for doing so. You can only imagine the patriarchy of the time, how difficult it was for women who often were considered slaves or were second-class citizens, didn't have all the rights of men, like most of human history in most places, including our country. Hasn't been that long ago since women have uh, had more equal rights and still there's work to be done, church, to fight the patriarchy, to fight the inequalities that we see in our society constantly. Nevertheless, Deborah goes with them. And sure enough, as you can imagine from this story, she leads them to victory. She tells Barak when he needs to attack and when he needs to get up and where he had to go. And it plays out as you can imagine. Now, it's a little longer. I'd encourage you to read all of Judges 4 if you want to hear the whole story about all the details of how it works out. But Deborah, a judge, a leader, a prophetess, leads Israel to freedom. Now, freedom is difficult to identify here. We're not just talking about uh, oppressors in the same way that we would talk about them today. But back then, in this story, we have the Israelites that have been uh, oppressed and been treated cruelly for 20 years. And this is the moment. Deborah calls the moment. She's listening to God. She's in sync with what God is calling her to do. And she leads Israel out of oppression into freedom. Now, not freedom to do anything we want. Today, I think we often get caught up in this idea that freedom is the ability to do whatever you want. Well, that's not freedom, folks. Freedom is the ability to be who we are called to be. To be people of love who we are called to be. To be, that is true freedom. Not freedom to oppress ourselves, not freedom to oppress others, not freedom to, to lead ourselves into destruction or to death or, or lead others into such things, but to lead our lives as people who are created to be with God. Freedom. Now this story in Judges, it mirrors a story that Moses has with God. God is angry with the Israelites and Moses is out there and he's talking to God and he says, no, God, it's, you know, they're doing the best they can. And he's kind of in the middle of, of the Israelites who are, uh, you know, making a golden calf down on, down below the mountain. And Moses is up trying to talk with God and, and the Ten Commandments and, you know, this story of them in the, the wilderness. And Moses is trying to lead them. And God says, fine, take them away. And Moses says something similar to what is said here. He says, if you don't lead me, if you don't go with us, I'm not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Now, these stories are mirrored. And I, we could have been talking more about this story in Genesis. I mean, in Exodus. I'm sorry, in Exodus about Moses. But he gets enough screen time. So let's, let's move it back to Deborah. And I want you to just for a moment think of someone who has inspired you to be a better person. Who has inspired you to lead a better life, to live a life that is more worthy than you thought could be? Here's another question. When was the last time that you were truly inspired? When were you inspired? What moved you? What moved inside you so that you could be something better than you thought you could? Who was it? When was it? See, the Bible is full of these stories about men and women who are inspirational leaders. 
Now, I wish we had more of Deborah in our Bible. I wish we had more. I wish we had more discussion about the way that she lived her life, how she talked to God and the ways that, that she interacted with those around her. What kind of person she was, not just because who we are matters, but because we know that when we have leaders, when we have people who inspire others, who are connected to God, that that matters. I've been inspired. I've had many people in my life, many mentors in my life, both women and men that have inspired me, that I've sought after, that I've looked up to, that I've, I've reached out to when I was in need, who have been with me. Pastor Raphael always talks about this. He talks about three people he always needs in his life. He needs a mentor. He needs someone he can, looks up, he can look up to. Someone who he does look up to. Someone who will talk to him, will lead him, will help guide him, will teach him. He needs a friend, someone who he can share things with, who he can just be himself with. He needs to spend time with that person so that he can decompress so that he can be with someone who he knows will not judge him and will receive him as he is. And the third person is someone he can mentor. Someone who he can help teach, who he can help guide, who he can pass along wisdom and knowledge. Now these three people are important. And today we're talking about someone who you can look up to, who you do look up to. Now, so often I hear this and I, I, I hear about people who talk about age as being so important in this, that your mentor is someone who is older than you so that you can look up to them. And looking up to our elders, looking up to our mentors is a wonderful thing. But make no mistake about it. In a mentoring relationship, we're talking about caring for one another back and forth. It's not this downward slope. It's not somebody who's at the top of a river who's pouring what they can into the river and somebody's at the bottom with a, a bucket, right? And they have to catch everything that falls from the waterfall. That's not a mentor. A mentor is someone who's in relationship with you, who you can talk to and share with what's going on in your life, who can, who can be there, who can listen who you can learn from and who will learn from you. And the best mentoring relationships, it goes both ways. Even as, you know, maybe you could call yourself the apprentice, but there's always a relationship. And in that relationship, we can be inspired to be better people. In fact, we are called to be in these relationships, to think about our lives and say, how can I live, lead a better life? How can I continue to love more? How can I continue to give to this world more? And be intentional about these things. This isn't something that just happens. It isn't something that just happens with age. It's something that we have to think about, that we have to search for. I would invite Deborah to be my mentor someone who I could look up to. And in fact, Barak does exactly this. Deborah calls to Barak. And Barak says, I'm not going anywhere unless you come with me. He asked Deborah, will you lead me? Will you guide me? Will you be with me as we go? And yes, I'll, I'll be doing work. And yes, I'll be about it. But I, I want you with me. I need you with me. And Deborah does so. She not only leads Barak, she not only mentors Barak, but she ends up helping free all of Israel. She has an impact on the whole community because she mentors someone else. And Barak has an impact on the whole community because he asked for help, he asked for a mentor. He asks for support. We all need these things, folks. It does not matter your age. It does not matter who you are. We all need people who we can 
walk through life with, who we can bounce things off of, who will listen to us, who will guide us, who will help support us. Because God did not call us to be where we are. God did not call us, I'm sorry, to stay where we are. God is calling each and every one of us to, to something else, to something new, to something that's ahead of us or before us or happening maybe right now in this moment. And we need to support one another in this. We need to help one another. We need to be intentional about being in relationship with someone, mentoring someone and being a mentee to someone else. These relationships are vital to us continuing to follow God. So often, I think we think they're kind of optional, but really, if we want to follow God, if we want to be people of love, then we've got to support one another in that. Entirely, wholly, lifting each other up, doing so in small groups, doing so in one-on-one -on -one relationships, with mentors, with mentees. This is vital work that God has called us to do. And we can't do it alone. There is that proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Folks, our church has a lot of work to do. And it's not going to happen quickly. Our community is in need. Communities around the world are in need of love. There are whole communities that are built on fear who definitely don't love one another and can't love someone else as they love themselves. There's div division. There's anger. There is violence. We see it every time we look on the news, every time we read the newspaper. And the only way to do this is to start with us. And the way that starts is with intentional relationships, intentional loving relationships. As a church, we've talked about knowing God and growing with God and growing in loving relationships with God and with other people. We're inviting us to do that work now, to, to be a part of community groups, to be a part of these intentional loving relationships, these, these groups where we get to share life together. And beyond that, to start mentoring and men, you know, being a mentee to someone. And being intentional about our relationships and our love for one another so that we can invite people into that. Not so we can hold on to it ourselves, so that once we join a community group, we can invite other folks to understand what it means to be loved in community. To understand what it means to have a mentor, someone who loves you, who cares for you, who wants the best for you. Who wants you to be free to be who you were created to be. And these relationships are so important. They're everything. Because we're going to continue to seek God by sharing love in community together. We are going to continue to seek God by sharing in relationships, in loving community together. That is what church has always been about. That is what church has been about from the beginning when folks were meeting in church in ho homes and were running from an authority. No matter the size of the church, we are all looking for loving relationships. So I want you to start praying about who you can mentor and who you can call a mentor, who you can ask to be a mentor. For we cannot do this alone no matter our intentions, no matter how long we've been in the church. We cannot do this alone. We have to continue to seek God. And God is found in the love that we share together. Amen.
Let us now come together for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right in the good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, that night, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy, holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. So, my dear friends, the body of Christ broken for you. Also, the blood of Christ shed for all of you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your kingdom. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. New Beginnings family, we hope you have been receiving our updates. Please let us know. Call us at 909-515-5770 or email us at newbeginnings.nbie at gmail.com. Friends, uh, we have our in-person service today at the downtown campus, so our Zoom fellowship hour will be at noon. We thank those of you who came to our in-person service today and uh, our next in-person service will be on the 15th of August at the North Campus. More information to follow, please register uh, to Gail App. Her email is at gapt 
ndie at gmail.com. We'd like to thank our young adults for putting together our VBS online and also uh, to Fernando Westry for helping us and Joshua Platon for helping us with our videos for VBS. We hope that you've enjoyed our VBS uh, this past week. And uh, again, a big thank you to all of our volunteers. For this week, uh, for our Zoom studies, we have Don Leifer on Tuesday evening with What's in Your Hymnal, and yours truly for our Friday night Bible study. It will return this coming Friday. Check out our website, nbie.org, or our email blast for more information. Friends, just as we're having in-person service, we will also be having community groups as we gather together as New Beginnings. This will begin on Sunday, August the 8th. If you're interested, please contact Gale App if you'd like to be part of our community groups. We still have copies of our upper rooms for July and August, so if you'd like to receive a copy of this devotional, please call the church office and I'll be more than happy to deliver these to you. Also, our Highland Preschool is reopening on August the 9th instead of August the 2nd. So please take note of that. Registration for preschool uh, opens on August the 2nd. So please call our preschool for registration information. We are still in need of online greeters for our online worship. Please contact Fernando Westry. Email him at fernandowestry at gmail.com to schedule a recording on Thursdays. Also, we're also calling our choir members unable to record at home. You can also record on Thursday mornings. Contact Fernando Westry to schedule your recording for music for the next Sunday. We thank you all so much for your continuing support to New Beginnings. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so by making a check payable to New Beginnings United Methodist Church. Please do not abbreviate as we were going to have problems with the bank. Also, you can go on our website, nbie.org, and by clicking on the giving tab. You can also give through text. Here is now a short video on how to text to give. Again, we thank you all so much for your continuing support to New Beginnings, and may God continue to bless us all. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him Jesus, Jesus.
Receive this blessing. Go from this place being people of God, people of love who care for one another, to reach out to others in intentional relationships, to change this world one relationship at a time. Go now to seek a mentor, to be a mentor, and to share your love with this world. Amen.